Hello and welcome to Your Money, Their Hands. And this week we're at Fidelity to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the Special Situations Fund with Anthony Bolton, the founding manager, and Sanjeev Shah, his successor. Anthony, first of all, if I could ask you, you've survived six banking crises. Are we out of this one yet? I think we are. Um, I mean, what we haven't seen is all the repercussions in, in terms of regulation, but I'm pretty sure that we are over the crisis. It's been a great year, 2009, for markets. 2010, are you still as bullish? I'm still optimistic. I don't think the bull market is over yet, but I think the nature of the bull market is going to change next year. And we'll probably have, we haven't had a, 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 a decent consolidation phase so far in the bull market, and I think we'll probably have one of those next year. And you've been quite keen on banks in the past, haven't you? You've always said the good time to buy them is in the, the, the immediate aftermath. Is, is that still your view? Still very much my view. Sanjeev, you're in the driving seat now, 2010 Special Situations Fund. For you, what are the special, special situations? Okay, for special situations, as you know, I look for un, you know, unloved, unfashionable sorts of areas and anomalies in the marketplace, valuation anomalies. And I, I'd probably highlight five areas. First of all, media is a key bet within the fund. It's about 16% of the overall fund, and I'm finding some very good anomalies within, within that sector. Secondly, technology looks very cheap relative to a longer-term history and also gives good organic growth prospects in what will be a, a lower growth environment going forward. The third area that I would highlight is financials, and that includes the banks. So I do have quite a large exposure to the banks, but I do also have uh, exposure to an unloved area, which is real estate, too. Uh, the, f the fourth area that I'd highlight is what I believe will be a rising mergers and acquisitions activity in 2010, uh, given that we're going into a low growth environment. So I'm trying to identify franchises which could be taken over within that context. Um, and then finally... Here it comes. What is it? <laughs> uh, and finally, the, the, the final area that I highlight is large cap growth, where you know I do believe there are a lot of franchises in the market which look very good value, such as Glaxo, Smith Klein, for example. Looking across broadly the continent, I mean, there's still some concerns. You mentioned the financials there, uh, that some of the banks are in trouble still. Do you see there is a possibility, perhaps, that we haven't seen the end of the crisis and that something could flare up? Uh, you know, I think the worst of the crisis is past us. Um, I think there will always be individual sort of um, s situations like we saw in the last sort of month or so, like D Dubai. But, I, you know, I'm not of the view that it's sufficient to actually derail the, the actual overall environment. Now, it's not the end of fund managing for you because you're about to set off Anthony for the, for the Far East or for China or help That's launch right. a China fund. Why? I've been excited about China for about six years. I, I first went there in 2003 and been going there twice a year ever since. But it, it's the opportunities in, in China and the fact, you know, it's the third biggest economy in the world. It'll be the second biggest within a year, I think. But it's still quite a small stock market. But for someone like myself, a stock picker, I really think it's an un researched area and I think there are lots of opportunities for someone with my style looking for misvalued stocks in, in a stock market that isn't as sophisticated as the British or say the European stock markets. I see you've mentioned before that it's not necessarily all purely Chinese bread companies but companies that have a broader appeal perhaps even in Europe that have a good business relationship or prospects in China is that correct so you will still be looking perhaps around your old pool? I mean, we haven't, exa we haven't finalized the exact details of the funds, but actually the majority of it, it, the main focus is going to be Chinese listed companies listed in China, listed in Hong Kong, and listed in America. But I will have a bit of room for my old hunting ground, but I'm not going to spend that much time looking at the old markets. Now, finally, guys, you've got to tell me, have you ever disagreed on an investment principle? And if so, who came out on top? <laughs> Well, I mean, because we've in the past run different pools of money. I mean, clearly we've had different, you know, stocks within within our respective portfolios. Um, I mean, not an example doesn't come to mind immediately. Can you, Can you think of one, Anthony? I can't offhand, and I, I think the interesting thing looking at next year is how similar our, our views is. I mean, I think we both think that some of the cyclical shares and commodity shares that have led the market this year 
are not going to be the stars next year. And I've, I've got a very similar view to Sanjeev of what's going to do well next year. Okay, well, happy 30th anniversary and thank you very much. Anthony Bolton and Sanjeev Shah. And that's it for this week and indeed this year. But don't forget, you can keep up to date with all the latest news and views online and in the Saturday and Sunday papers. Thank you for watching and please do join us again next year.